addition to plant-based living. You will love it. It's really good. So she'll be here to do this. If you want to speak to her after the question, she'll be back up to the speaker table, and you can always reach her there and buy her book. So enjoy. Thank you so much, and thank you all for coming in today. Isn't before we go any further though? Is not this a great event? The Sacrifice of Ed. doctors and the dietitians and we have the humanitarians and I am here with the distinct privilege of being behavior change specialist for you today because sometimes we hear there's something great we could be doing or should be doing and then here we are over here and we need a little bit of a bridge is that correct <laughs> or maybe someone you know needs a little help on a bridge so what I'm here to do is to share with you the five universal steps of transition to plant-based nutrition and plant-based living and I'll tell you how I arrived at those five universals and let me tell you this here's the key word sustainable transition that's what I am really interested in what can, how can you make this change so that it's sustainable so before we get into those five steps what I'd like you to do right now is first, thank you, thanks for coming in. I am sure that even with a crowd this size that we are all over the place with where we are with eat, just getting more plants on our plate. Some people in here are probably vegetarian, some are probably following a vegan diet and maybe have been doing so for a long time. Some people may be just getting started on plant-based nutrition. Some people here may be just thinking about it and trying to find out more about it. But that's something we all have in common, right? Something has cued all of us in to the possibility of another way of looking what's on our plate. So to get started, what I'd like you to do right now is everyone, think back, where was your point that you first connected with this idea of eating a plant-based diet or eating less animal products and less processed foods? Can you find it? Maybe it was someone you talked to. Maybe it was something you heard or something that you read. Maybe it was over a period of time. Can you find that place? Does everybody find it? Okay, what I'd like is for somebody, if I don't know your story already, is to just, you don't even have to raise your hand, come pop up here and in 10 or 15 seconds, I'd like you to tell your story of awakening, how you found out about plant-based nutrition. Just anybody, quick pop up. 10 to 15 seconds. Great, come on up. I was reading a book by Mark Bittman, who's the food writer for the New York Times, excuse me, and he wrote his book called Food Matters. It took me about 10 minutes reading that book to realize that that's what I wanted to do. He's, he's, he's about a 90% vegetarian. Isn't that vegan before six, guys? No. Oh, Mark Bittman, I thought Oh, yes, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. one of his books. Perfect. What is your name? Don. Don. Well, thank you. Don here, I'd like to give you... So thank you for helping me teach my lesson today, and be sure to get me to sign that at the after class, okay? Um, here is the way it works. Uh, as you probably guessed by now, the first of the five steps is awakening. Someone you talked to, something you heard, some friend of yours maybe, something that you, that you understood connected you with this idea of changing your life in this most fundamental way with what's on your plate. And we know from the research tells us that there are three main reasons that people change to eating a plant-based diet. One of them is for your health or for your weight. This was a big motivator for me. I struggled with my, my weight for a long time, about 30 years. And uh, I've been a vegetarian for 42. So I would say my journey to whole food plant-based began back then. But for the first 30 years of that, my weight went up and, and down. The picture on the left is taken in 1998, as I was still struggling for over 30 years of my weight. But when I was able to move through to whole food plant-based, along with some changes I made with uh, mindset mastery and mindfulness, it made a big difference. And remember I used that word sustainability before? This has been 20 years since that I have sustained this 50-pound uh, weight loss. So uh, I know what I speak with the struggles with the weight, and that's why I'm such a good resource with, uh, for behavior change. Another reason that people go to, I mean, it's not just weight for health. You know, there's all kinds of things with heart disease and cardiovascular health. 
And if you know someone who is trying to tell you it's not healthy to eat plant-based and you better go paleo, then it might be good to direct them to the fact that Kaiser Permanente has advised all of their doctors and healthcare providers to suggest and tell their patients to move to a whole foods plant-based diet. Now Kaiser, they're an HMO. So they're interested in people being healthy. So there's a little connection there. And then we've also got the Dean Ornish program for reversal of heart disease that is covered by Medicare. Those are two pretty solid mainstream accepted uh, avenues. So good for you to have in your arsenal of conversation. Uh, another reason that people go to plant-based or vegetarian or vegan is because of a lot of animals. And you probably recognize our friend Jean Bauer from Farm Sanctuary right up here in um, uh, by Chico and Orlin, but this was, both of these were motivators for me. My weight and my health were important to me, and also as I started out as a yoga teacher in college, and so I was early on connected with the idea of the other creatures on our planet and how can we best be concerned for the lot of the animals. So that's a big draw for many people. And the third reason that many people come to plant-based diet is because and the environment, and I know that you saw um, Jim Cameron's picture in Roseanne's slideshow just before too. Um, Susie and Jim endorsed the plant-based journey for me and have been very generous to me in supporting the, this project, this work project, because they are champions of the environment. They went overnight plant-based when they put it all together, and, uh, and they have also helped to create a school in Southern California, which I profile in the book a little bit. And I just talked to their food service person. They're all plant-based now. It's a, a K-12 school down in uh, Malibu, of course. Let's go there. <laughs> so um, the, the, all three of these reasons, these are the three primary reasons that people come to plant-based diet. And I gotta tell you, all three of them are mine and my, uh, my reasons. And I told you what, 42 years ago, do you know all three of these reasons were on the table at that time. 1973, I have a booklet on my bookshelf. It's called Meat on the Menu, Who Needs It? And in that booklet, it talks about the health problems with animal product consumption, it talks about the environment pro problems, and it talks about the problems for the lot of animals. So it's not new stuff, and the problems are even more urgent. So in the interest of time, we've got to move forward, and we're going to go to step number two. Used to, everyone starts with an awakening, universal. And I told you I'd tell you hey, how I came up with these five steps. Through my own personal experience, through my years of coaching people to making this transition, and I also surveyed over 1,200 people for the manuscript of the plant-based journey who have been successfully transitioned to plant-based living for three to five years or more. And I asked them, what was it about your transition that made it work? Or what do you wish you had known when you were trying to make this change? And what would you like to tell others to make their transition easier? And that's all informed the book. But that's how I know about these five steps. They were universal. The second step is scout. Can you figure out what that might be? You gotta get ready. Once you find out you wanna eat this way, what's on the plate? What's off the plate? Where do you get it? How do you get your kitchen set up? There is a little bit of a curve there. It's not very complex, but that's what I take you through in a plant-based journey. First you find out which, why you want to do this, align with that, keep that foundation, then figure out what you need to get with your food and on your kitchen. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of really basic information in here for that. How to, to set up a week, I put a week's sample plan of just how I ate for a week, I just kept a journal. And from there, you be go to the rookie stage. Now here's where it gets fun. This is where you get to eat, right? This is when you start putting it together. And in the rookie stage, I start out with, I, this, I, I'm very positive oriented. I taught school for, I taught sixth grade for 20 years. And I know that the way to build success for a student, which is all of us, is to build upon the positive and make incremental changes in that direction. And this is one of the reasons that the plant-based journey has been doing so well in a way that there are a lot of plant-based books out there, but my book has just been, um, it's being translated into Russian. I just found out this out this week. Um, I have several doctors and dietitians across the country who are using this book in their waiting rooms and with their patients because of the pragmatic way that it moves people through the process. Because as a teacher, 
I am skilled and practiced in taking what might be a complex problem or challenge and figuring out how to make it into successful incremental bites to move through. So that's what we do in the rookie chapter, is how do you start to plantify your plate? Have you guys been seeing the, who's been watching Good Day Sacramento? Have you seen any of our segments? They got a hold of the plant-based journey in uh, September, and they said we want you to come on. I've been on four times now. I've been on every month, and I, they're all archived on my website. Um, the first one, this was with Courtney, and I did a segment on how to take foods that you love, that you're already familiar with, with tastes, and increase the plant content of them. It doesn't have to be ditch all your favorite flavors. As a matter of fact, that's counterproductive. We are really wedded to the foods that we love, and there's no reason that they needed to be ditched. You can just kind of plantify them a little bit. And that's one of the, um, the processes that I detail in the rookie, journey, the rookie chapter. I also have templates. I gotta tell you, this, this has been the runaway hit of this book has been these recipe templates I make. Between you and me, I'm a very lazy cook. I don't like to spend time cooking, but I love to eat, and I insist that it tastes good. I'm not a twigs and bark plant-based person. <laughs> it's got to taste good. So uh, what I've done then is created some really simple things about how you can put foods together to make a plant-based meal. And you know, when I was talking to my publisher, my publisher is the same as who published the China study, so they've been really good to align with. And they were telling me during our initial conversation, you know, these templates, they've been really good. And I thought, well, okay, that's just the way I cook. You know, I put this together and that together. But it's been a lifesaver for many people. So you can peruse through that. I've got lots of books out there. I'll be signing afterwards, so take a look through. And then after you go through the, the uh, rookie stage, now you've gotten pretty good at it at home. You know, how to make your foods work. But what about when you go out the door? Ever had that challenge? What about the workplace? What about driving to the workplace? What about travel? What about those family gatherings? Anyone encountered any of those challenges? <laughs> I have um, the whole book it is really riddled with all of these results from the people that I interviewed. And in this particular chapter, I have how to deal with food pushers. And I also have profiles of families who have successfully transitioned their entire brood of children and how they went about doing that. So as a teacher, again, I found the best way to learn something is to get some modeling. So how is someone else doing this? And then have it teased apart so you can see how that worked so well. How am I doing on my time, boss? Good, whatever that means. <laughs> okay, so that's the rock star stage. I can take you to a bigger stage. And the next stage after that, if we don't turn it off, is uh, the champion stage. And the champion stage, doesn't that sound like you've got to be really good? Like, you know, I've got to be the best. But actually, this is the shortest chapter in the book. Because at the champion stage, you simply keep practicing what you are doing to get you further moved along your journey. And it behooves you to keep looking back. Where do you need to brush up your skills? Are there some basics that you need to look at? Um, do you need to be maybe, if you've had a little struggle, is there a problem with some of the contents of your diet? Go back and look at the nutrition section. Is it, a, if you're struggling with being prepared with food on time, I have lots of be prepared models laid out in the plant-based journey. But again, these five steps are essential to go through to be able to have sustainable success. Now, here's the next question you may have. I thought you might, some people say, Lanny, what do you think is the best way to make this transition? <clears throat> should you like go overnight? Or should you go over time? Well, you probably have your own opinion about that. But I asked my survey people what they thought. What do you think people should be advised to do, overnight or over time? And I have the results of the survey in the plant-based journey. So what do you think came out ahead? Right away, who says right away? Who says over time? Okay, well, looks like I've got a 50-50 split, which is exactly what happened. You'll see, I even, I even put a graph in the, um, the book where it was very close, but there's interesting details. Because when I do a survey, I don't just go yes, no. I say, well, tell me about this, tell me about that. So I asked people to elaborate, whichever their choice was or their advice, to tell me more about that. 
What would they tell people to do? How would they tell them how to do that? And how did that work for you? So for all the people who said overnight change, cold turkey, cold tofurkey, whatever <laughs> you want to call it, uh, in the fine print, half of them said, well, you should go overnight, just rip off the Band-Aid. And well, for a time I struggled with, so I did this. And then after a while I did this. And so in their mind, they jumped all in, but they really did incremental jumps over time. So that should be very comforting to you also. There's such a tall order and we're so perfectionist and we think, you know, if the other side of the Grand Canyon looks so great, I should just be there now, forgetting that there's a long, you know, bridge between here and there. But I do want to qualify this overnight and over time thing. Both of them are possible, it depends on you. But both of them require for sustainable success that all five steps be addressed. Some people just blow through them overnight. Some people need months, weeks, years to do that. But you still need to address. Stay connected with your awakening. Luke's <laughs> already reading this book. Boy, he was a good guy. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> And, you know, stay connected with that, because that's the foundation. We can get kind of lost and distracted, and those are reasons for going plant-based will grow. And then be sure you have the basics in your kitchen, and then don't be afraid to get in there and try it out. You don't need to be a fancy cook to be able to eat this way, and then just keep learning over time. I do want to also add to you that I have uh, an important part of the book to me, because it was so important in my own transformation below those 42 years of them. When I finally was able to figure this out uh, and put it together in a package, I required that this be in the book because it's so important for, essential for really sustainable change. I call them the three pillars. There's the food. So there are a lot of the plant-based doctors that'll say it's just all about the food, it's all about the food. And I'll go, great, that's good. But for me, it was also about the fitness and the frame of mind. They all go together. So in the key supporting players, I address the fitness, now let me ask you, when you think of fitness, what comes to mind? Perhaps you think <coughs> exercise means I'm going to burn some calories, get a better figure, build some muscle, get a stronger heart. And exercise does all those things beautifully. But it misses the lead with the real benefit of physical activity, and that is what it does for your brain. The minute you start to put one foot in front of the other, as my lovely demonstrating model is doing, <laughs> unbeknownst to her, thank you for demonstrating walking, how easy it is to move. <laughs> there is a biochemical cascade that takes place in your body that mixes with a protein in your brain called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which means building brain connections and cells. So if you are not moving your body and your body's stuck in cement, I'm pretty sure your brain might be stuck in cement too. So when you want to make lifestyle change, add some physical activity. Look at this, we've got all kinds of um, demonstrators here moving about, very good. So that's really important for making lifestyle change. And the other key supporting player is mindset mastery or some way of stepping back and taking a look at how we can get some degree of control or management over our processes of thinking. Isn't that really what drives us crazy? <laughs> you know, we have this parade of thoughts all day long and sometimes it takes us to places and eating foods that are incompatible with our goals. Is there a way to intervene on that? Yes, there is. And it takes training just like any other like physical training or diet training. So, since I promised time for Q&A and I walked you through very quickly through the five steps of the journey and the key supporting players, I can always talk lots more but I want to pause and see if there's some questions I can address. Maybe tell about your experience or some challenge that you come up, came up. Yes. Hi, I've been um, eating plant-based for three years now, and I want my whole family to eat the same way. Yes. Um, and I can't convince my dad. He's a, he's a scientist, and he's really smart, and he's read the China study, but he's st still not convinced. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated. Uh, and yeah, it, it's interesting, these family situations. Sometimes the family dynamic can be in, get in the way. You know, our long-standing relationships. It's hard to hear your daughter tell you what to do. <laughs> and sometimes it can be um, a benefit for you. But are you in his life a lot? Is he close by? Yeah, we yeah. talk once a week and we visit frequently. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, what is your name? Alice. 
Alice, thanks for, uh, for speaking out today. I found, again, the best thing to do is modeling behaviors because we cannot force anyone else to change and tell them what to do, and it just creates so much tension, and I'm sure you love your father very much and want the best for him. But the, the best way that I have found and the, that has brought more people to plant-based living has just been be a model of attraction, and I don't mean I'm an attractive model. That's not what I mean at all. That didn't come out like I'm my plan. I mean just by the way you live your life and your consistency over time and the results that you get, and then you just have to kind of let the, let the rest go. And keep bringing him food, I bet you cook for him. <laughs> Well, all best to you on that, and you might be learn something from the um, the uh, models that are provided in the plant-based journey, because I actually have a family of five, and the parents talk about how they brought their children along, which is not their elderly parents, but I also heard from the kids. Three of the children wrote sections in there about their transitions, their struggles, their social situations. Very informative. Thank you. So just a yes. I just want to make. Um, I'm a nurse practitioner. Oh. Yes, and so that's why we're, we're so in agreement here because it's a holistic approach. So I was not directed to help Alice out to be able to, to everybody. Yeah, and that's why since we only have uh, um, was that nine minutes or oh <laughs> okay um, we have such a little time. It's that's why it's so great because Roseanne was here with, about the nutrition, so you can put the nutrition together. And my specialty is working with behavior change, the process moving too. So um, it's very important to remember all those parts to it. But again, the most important thing is also getting started. And remember I talked about plantify your plate back there a little bit, getting more plant foods in, because people are overwhelmed. They think, how can I make this change overnight? How can I you know, lose all these foods and gain all these? But there are ways to do transition. Thank you for um, volunteering your ideas. Does someone else have some thoughts or a question? Yes. Um, you mentioned uh, taking the active mind and stilling it. Yes. How, how, what are some techniques that you're using for that? I practice mindfulness meditation, which is, is there anyone else who's familiar with that geek? You know, it's interesting that there, like I was talking earlier, there's this constant parade of thoughts going through our head. We're either planning something for the future or we're reflecting back to the past or we're worried about something that, by the way, probably won't ever happen anyway. But it, it can really take us away from just being present with what's going on in our lives right now. And so why does that matter? What matters is, for, especially for those of us who may have been finding a way to deal with these anxieties of all these different thoughts, is to recognize that you don't need to actually follow each one of them. That's kind of a unique thought for many people. You know, a thought comes up, let's do this, or I'll run with that. So a mindfulness practice allows you to kind of step back a little bit and see these thoughts as a parade in front of you so that you can choose more skillfully, whether it's about what you eat or something else in your life. So, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of training out there about that. So did that help? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And there was another hand up here right in front of you. Yes, hi. Well, um, 45 years ago, I went vegetarian, and it was hard. It was really hard. What it meant was I lived in New York City. I was the only vegetarian. Uh, you go out and get a potato and a salad, and it was really depressing. But I did it because I <coughs> love animals. And you cannot love them and eat them. You cannot. They suffer. And how can you enjoy something that is from so much suffering? And then about six years ago, I found out how horrible the lives of, of egg-laying hens and dairy cattle. I, I found about their lives, and instantly I went vegan. And guess what? I love to eat now. I used to like to eat. Eat was like, you know, you eat, and it's okay, you know, it's like, whatever. Now when I eat a nice vegan meal, I'm so happy. I sit there and I do this little dish, and I look like I'm crazy. I'm sitting there and it's like, woohoo! It just, I, everything tastes so good. 
And I'm really, I, I don't use salt. I have a salt shaker in my house, one of those Morton things. It's 13 years old. <laughs> I put a date on it. I don't know why I put a date on it, but I had a date on it. I was like, holy smokes, and there's still salt in it. But, and, you know, then. Well, you make a good point I love here, my but, food, and I yeah. enjoy it so much. And then I think part of it is my conscience is, is much happier. I, you know, I think there's something to it. And what is your name again? Oh, my name is Beryl. Beryl. Because there is a cognitive dissonance that we can become awakened to if we're, like you said, an animal lover, and then where, what is this of the disconnect of what we have in our plate? And there is a moment of time that you can become awakened to that and then still persist anyway. I know for a long time I was still eating dairy products even though I go, I, I used to teach school in Durham was, uh, by Chico, and every day I'd drive through the valley and all the cows are out in the fields, all the dairy cows, and I kind of, you know, felt like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So for me, finally making that change, it took me a while, but I finally made that change, and there is an opening of the heart and the of joy that you get on your plate <coughs> that is new. So I'm really glad you brought that up. Good. Anyone else? See, how, so I'm a teacher. I go by question and answer, right? Isn't that how we work? Yes. Um, about 40 years ago, when I was <coughs> in school, I read about a study that was done in Japan and the more affluent women that were eating the, the Kobe beef that had the, the income to eat Kobe beef and do more of a Western diet, they were getting incidences of breast cancer. And the women who were sticking to a tofu diet and even you know, fish, healthy fish, um, they were not getting breast cancer. And that study really, really I gave up red meat at that point. What's your name again? Dorothy. Dorothy. Oh, that's my mother's name. <laughs> so thank you, Dorothy. And I do want to point out, as um, our nurse practitioner, what nurse practitioner, is that what you said you are? Um, the, the whole awakening chapter in the plant-based journey goes through all of these reasons and is without, without being able to, you know, that can take volumes and volumes to explain all that. But I address all three of those issues and there's over 250 reference points in the plant-based journey for the science that I pulled into it. So again, as a teacher, I've got to have it backed up with science. So you'll be happy to see that. Yes. Oh, no, it's not for you. Uh, well, I started eating about 20 some years ago, but at that time, doctors would roll their eyes and do what was going on. And recently, I had a broken finger, uh, and I went in, and the nurse practitioner said, How do you end up 76 years old and taking no medicine? And I said, Because I've been a vegan for 20 some years. And she said, Oh, that'll do it. She said, Oh, I wish I could do it. <laughs> They see you're a model and example. Um, I just had my 63rd birthday, and people started to ask me um, if I've started having work done. <laughs> and I'll say, well, I travel a lot. Greg and I travel all over the world. We just got back from our second safari where I got tossed by a warthog, and I still have dents on my back from it. So I said, well, if you call getting, uh, you know, run, uh, run over by a warthog, then yes, I've had work done. Or if you call, I, once I had a... a a stingray latched onto my leg and did liposuction on my thigh. There's still a little dent there. You know how they clamp and suck? Well, they, you know, I had to fight them off. So I guess I had work done there. But my real answer is, you know, I haven't had work done, but I've, I've done the work. And it's a combination of moving your body, eating foods that are congruent with what our environment needs, what the, all the creatures of our planet need, and what your health needs, and making it delicious and enjoying every bite and a combination of also taking care of your inner self and just building a beautiful life around a beautiful plate of plants. So thank you very much for spending time with me today. <laughs> I'll be out here, but I don't have any questions, but I'll be out here to speak, but if you want to come and answer any questions, thank you.